Introduction of Project In this video, we are going to see about Introduction of Project. Project is defined as a temporary endeavor which is undertaken to create a unique product, service or result. A project is temporary in that it has a defined beginning and end in time and therefore defined scope and resources. A project is usually deemed to be a success if it achieves the objectives according to their acceptance criteria within an agreed timescale and budget. A project is unique in that it is not a routine operation but a specific set of operations designed to accomplish a singular goal. So, a project team often includes people who don't usually work together, sometimes from different organizations and across multiple geographies. Features of a project The activities that benefit most from conventional project management are likely to lie between these two extremes. There is a hazy boundary between the non-routine projects and the routine job. The first time when doing a routine task, it will be like a project. On the other hand, a project to develop a system to previous ones that have developed will have a large element of the routines. The following characteristics distinguish projects. Non-routine tasks are involved, planning is required, specific objectives are to be met or specific product is to be created, the project has a predetermined time span, work is carried out for someone other than yourself, people are formed into a temporary work group to carry out the task, work is carried out in several phases, the resources that fulfills the projects are Time, people, money, equipment, facilities. The project is being successful when it has the following features. Organized, well-planned approach. Project team commitment. Balance among. Time. Resources. Results. Customer Satisfaction Additional elements in defining the project are Funding Sources and Expectations Problem Background Information Critical Reference Document Project Methodologies, Management and Operation Required Capital Equipment Necessary Computer Hardware and Software Activities by Software Project In this video, we are going to see about Activities by Software Project. A software project is not concerned with the actual writing of software. In fact, where a software application is bought in off the shelf, there may be no software writing as such, but this is still fundamentally a software project because so many of the other activities associated with software will still be present. There are three successive processes that bring a new system into being. Feasibility study Planning Project Execution Feasibility Study In this video, we are going to see about Feasibility Study Feasibility Study the feasibility study assesses whether a project is worth starting that it has a valid business case. 
information is gathered about the requirements of the proposed application. Requirements elicitation can at least initially be complex and difficult. The feasibility study concentrates on the following three areas. Operational feasibility, technical feasibility, economic feasibility. Operational feasibility. Operational feasibility study tests the operational scope of the software to be developed. The proposed software must have high operational feasibility. The usability will be high. Technical feasibility. Technical feasibility study compares the level of technology available in the software development firm and the level of technology required for the development of the product. Here, the level of technology consists of the programming language, the hardware resources, other software tools, etc. Economic Feasibility The Economic Feasibility Study evaluates the cost of the software development against the ultimate income or benefits gets from the developed system. There must be scopes for profit after the successful completion of the project. When the feasibility study suggests that the project being considered is feasible operationally, technically and economically. This gives a green signal that the problem is worth solving and can proceed with the project. Planning In this video, we are going to see about planning. If the feasibility study indicates that the prospective project appears viable, then project planning can start. For larger projects, the detailed plan cannot be done at the beginning. So create an outline plan for the whole project and a detailed one for the first stage. Because we will obtain the detailed and accurate project information after the earlier stages of the project have been completed, planning of the later stages is left to nearer their start. Project Execution In this video, we are going to see about Project Execution. In this phase, the tasks which are described in the project plans are executed according to their schedules. The execution of a project often contains design and implementation subphases. The design is making decisions about the form of the products to be created. This could relate to the external appearance of the software, that is, the user interface or the internal architecture. The plan details the activities to be carried out to create these products. Planning and design can be confused because, at the most detailed level, planning decisions are influenced by design decisions. The figure shows the typical sequence of software development activities. Some activities are concerned with the system while others relate to the software. The development of software will be only one part of a project. Thus, a software product with five major components is likely to require five sets of activities to create them. Recommend analysis and elicitation, architectural design, detailed design, code and test, integration, qualification testing, 
installation acceptance support requirement analysis and elicitation Requirement analysis starts with requirements elicitation or requirements gathering which establishes what the potential users and their managers requires of the new system. It could relate to a function that the system should do something. It could be a quality requirement how well the functions must work. An example of this is dispatching an ambulance in response to an emergency telephone call. In this case, transaction time would be affected by hardware and software performance as well as speed of the human operation. Training to ensure that operators use the computer system efficiently is an example of a system requirement for the project as opposed to a specifically software requirement. There will also be resource requirements that relate to application development costs. Architectural Design The components of the new system that fulfill each requirement have to be identified. Existing components may be able to satisfy some requirements. In other case, a new component will have to be made. These components are not only software, they could be new hardware or work processes. Although software developers are primarily concerned with software components, it is very rare that these can be developed in isolation. They have to take an account of existing legacy system with which they will interoperate. The design of the system architecture is thus an input to the software requirements. A second architecture design process then takes place that maps the software requirements to the software components. Detailed design Each software component is made up of a number of software units that can be separately coded and tested. The detailed design of these units is carried out separately. Code and test Code and test refers to writing code for each software unit. Initial testing to debug each software units would be carried out at this stage. Integration the components are tested together to see if they meet the overall requirements. Integration could involve combining different software components or combining and testing the software element of the system in conjunction with the hardware platforms and user interactions. Qualification Testing the system including the software components has to be tested carefully to ensure that all the requirements have been fulfilled. Installation This is the process of making the new system operational. It would include activities such as setting up standing data, for example, the details for employees in a payroll system, setting system parameters, installing the software onto the hardware platforms and user training. Acceptance Support This is the resolving of problems with a newly installed system including the correction of any errors and implementing agreed extensions and improvements. Software maintenance can be seen as a series of minor software projects. In many environments, most software development is in fact maintenance. Methodologies in this video, we are going to see about methodologies. A plan for an activity must be based on some idea of a method of work. 
for example if you were asked to test some software you may know nothing about the software to be tested but you could assume that you would need to analyze the requirements for the software device and write test cases that will check that each requirement has been satisfied create test script and expected results for each test case compare the actual results and the expected results and identify discrepancies While a method relates to a type of activity in general, a plan takes that method and perhaps others and converts it to real activities identifying for each activity. Its start and end dates. Who will carry it out? What tools and materials including information will be needed? The output from one method might be the input to another. Groups of methods or techniques are often grouped into methodologies such as object oriented design. Ways of categorizing software projects. In this video we are going to see about ways of categorizing software projects. Projects may differ because of the different technical products to be created. So, we need to identify the characteristics of a project which could affect the way in which it should be planned and managed. Other factors are discussed below. Compulsory versus voluntary uses. Information systems versus embedded systems. Outsourced projects. Objective driven development. Compulsory versus voluntary users. In workplaces, there are systems that staffs have to use if they want to do something, such as recording a sale. However, use of a system is increasingly voluntary, as in the case of computer games. Hence, it is here it is difficult to elicit precise requirements from potential users as we could with a business system. What the game will do will thus depend much on the informed ingenuity of the developers along with techniques such as market surveys, focus groups and prototype evaluation. Information systems versus embedded systems A traditional distinction has been between information systems which enable staff to carry out office processes and embedded systems which controls machines. A stock control system would be an information system. An embedded or process control system might control the air conditioning equipment in a building. Some systems may have elements of both where, for example, the stock control system also controls an automated warehouse. Outsourced projects. While developing a large project, sometimes it makes good commercial sense for a company to outsource some parts of its work to other companies. There can be several reasons behind such a decision. For example, company may consider outsourcing as a good option if it feels that it does not have sufficient expertise to develop some specific parts of the product or if it determines that some parts can be developed cost effectively by another company. Such an outsourced project is a small part of some project. It is usually small in size and needs to be completed within a few months. Considering these differences between an outsourced project and a conventional project, managing an outsourced project entails special challenges. Indian software companies excel in executing outsourced software projects and have earned a fine reputation in this field all over the world. 
now the Indian companies have slowly begun to focus on product development as well. The type of development work being handled by a company can have an impact on its profitability. For example, a company that has developed a generic software product usually gets an uninterrupted stream of revenue over several years. However, outsourced projects fetch only one-time revenue to any company. Objective-Driven Development Projects may be distinguished by whether their aim is to produce a product or to meet certain objectives. A project might be to create a product, the details of which have been specified by the client. The client has the responsibility for justifying the product. On the other hand, the project requirement might be to meet certain objectives which could be met in a number of ways. An organization might have a problem and ask a specialist to recommend a solution. Many software projects have two stages. First is an objective-driven project resulting in recommendations. This might identify the need for a new software system. The next stage is a project actually to create a software product. This is useful where the technical work is being done by an external group and the user needs are unclear at the outset. The external group can produce a preliminary design at a fixed fee. If the design is acceptable, the developers can then quote a price for the second implementation and stage based on an agreed requirement. Stakeholders In this video, we are going to see about stakeholders. These are people who have a stake or interest in the project. Their early identification is important as you need to set up adequate communication channels with them. Stakeholders can be categorized as Internal to the project team External to the project team External to both the project team and the organization Internal to the project team this means that they will be under the direct managerial control of the project leader. External to the project team External to the project team but within the same organization. For example, the project leader might need the assistance of the users to carry out systems testing. Here, the commitment of the people involved has to be negotiated. External to both the project team and the organization. External stakeholders may be customers or users who will benefit from the system that the project implements. They may be contractors who will carry out work for the project. The relationship here is usually based on a contract. Different types of stakeholders may have different objectives and one of the jobs of the project leader is to recognize these different interests and to be able to reconcile them. For example, end users may be concerned with the ease of use of the new application while their managers may be more focused on staff savings. The project leader therefore needs to be a good communicator and negotiator. Boehm and Ross proposed a theory W of software project management where the manager concentrates on creating situations where all parties benefit from a project and therefore have an interest in its success. The W stands for win-win.
project managers can sometimes miss an important stakeholder group, especially in unfamiliar business contexts. These could be departments supplying important services that are taken for granted. Given the importance of coordinating the efforts of stakeholders, the recommended practice is for a communication plan to be created at the start of a project. Setting Objectives In this video, we are going to see about setting objectives. Among all, these stakeholders are those who actually own the project. They control the financing of the project. They also set the objectives of the project. The objectives should define what the project team must achieve for project success. Although different stakeholders have different motivations, the project objectives identify the shared intentions for the project. Objectives focus on the desired outcomes of the project rather than the task within it. They are the post conditions of the project. Informally, the objectives could be written as a set of statements following the opening words. The project will be a success if Thus, one statement in a set of objectives might be customers can order our products online rather than to build an e-commerce website. There is often more than one way to meet an objective and the more possible routes to success the better. There may be several stakeholders including users in different business areas who might have some claim to project ownership. In such case, a project authority needs to be explicitly identified with overall authority over the project. This authority is often a project steering committee or project board or project management board with overall responsibility for setting, monitoring and modifying objectives. The project manager runs the project on a day-to-day -day basis by regularly reports to the steering committee. Sub-Objectives and Goals An effective objective for an individual must be something that is within the control of that individual. An objective might be that the software application produced must pay for itself by reducing staff costs. As an overall business objective, this might be reasonable. For software developers, it would be unreasonable as any reduction in operational staff costs depends not just on them, but on the operational management of the delivered system. A more appropriate goal or sub-objective for the software developers would be to keep development costs within a certain budget. The mnemonic SMART is sometimes used to describe well-defined objectives. Specific Effective objectives are concrete and well-defined. Measurable Ideally, there should be measures of effectiveness which tell us how successful the project has been. For example, Achievable It must be within the power of the individual or group to achieve the objective. Relevant. The objective must be relevant to the true purpose of the project. Time constraint. There should be a defined point in time by which the objective should have been achieved. Measures of effectiveness. Measures of effectiveness provides practical methods of checking that an objective has been met. 
mean time between failures that is MTBF might, for example, be used to measure reliability. This is a performance measurement and as such can only be taken once the system is operational. Project managers want to get some idea of the performance of the completed system as it is being constructed. They will therefore seek productive measures. For example, a large number of errors found during the code inspections might indicate potential problems with reliability. The business case Most projects need to have a justification or business case. The effort and expense of pushing the project through must be seen to be worthwhile in terms of the benefits that will eventually be felt. A cost-benefit analysis will often be part of the project's feasibility study. This will itemize and quantify the project's costs and benefits. The benefits will be affected by the completion date. The sooner the project is completed, the sooner the benefits can be experienced. The quantification of benefits will often require the formulation of a business model which explains how the new application can generate the claimed benefits. A simple example of a business model is that a new web-based application might allow customers from all over the world to order a firm's product via the internet, increasing sales and thus increasing revenue and profits. Any project plan must ensure that the business case is kept intact. For example, the development costs are not allowed to raise to a level which threatens to exceed the value of benefits. That the features of the system are not reduced to a level where the expected benefits cannot be realized. That the delivery date is not delayed so that there is an unacceptable loss of benefits. Project Success and Failures In this video, we are going to see about Project Success and Failures. The project objectives are the targets that the project team is expected to achieve. In the case of software projects, they can usually be summarized as delivering the agreed functionality to the required level of quality on time within budget. A project could meet these targets but the application once delivered could fail to meet the business case. A computer game could be delivered on time and within budget but might then not sell. A commercial website used for online sales could be created successfully but customers might not use it to buy products because they could buy the goods more cheaply elsewhere. A project can be a success on delivery but then be a business failure. On the other hand, a project could be late and over budget but its deliverables could still over time generate benefits that outweigh the initial expenditure. Some argue that the possible gap between project and business concerns can be reduced by having a broader view of projects that includes business issues. For example, the project management of an e-commerce website implementation could plan activities such as market surveys, competitor analysis, focus groups, prototyping, and evaluation by typical potential users all designed to reduce business risk. 
customer relationship can also be built up over a number of projects. If a client has a trust in a supplier who has done satisfactory work in the past, they are more likely to use that company again, particularly if the new requirement builds on functionality already delivered. It is much more expensive to acquire new clients than it is to retain existing ones. Management in this video, we are going to see about management. Project management is the application of processes, methods, knowledge, skills and experience to achieve the project objectives. The management involves the following activities. Planning, deciding what is to be done. Organizing, making arrangements. Staffing selecting the right people for the job etc directing giving instructions monitoring checking on progress controlling taking action to remedy holdups innovating coming up with new solutions representing liaising with clients users developers suppliers and other stakeholders Much of the project manager's time is spent on only three of the eight identified activities, namely project planning, monitoring and control. The project management is carried out over three well-defined stages or processes irrespective of the methodology used. In the project initiation state, an initial plan is made. As the project starts, the project is monitored and controlled to proceed as planned. However, the initial plan is revised periodically to accommodate additional details and constraints about the project as they become available. Finally, the project is closed. In the project closing stage, all activities are logically completed and all contracts are formally closed. Initial project planning is undertaken immediately after the feasibility study phase and before starting the requirement analysis and specification process. Initial project planning involves estimating several characteristics of a project. Based on these estimates, all subsequent project activities are planned. The initial project plans are revised periodically as the project progresses and more project data becomes available. Once the project execution starts, monitoring and control activities are taken up to ensure that the project execution proceeds as planned. The monitoring activity involves monitoring the progress of the project. Control activities are initiated to minimize any significant variation in the plan. Project planning is an important responsibility of the project manager. During project planning, the project manager needs to perform a few well-defined activities that have been outlined below. Estimation The following project attributes are estimated. Cost How much is it going to cost to complete the project? Duration How long is it going to take to complete the project? Effort. How much effort would be necessary for completing the project? The effectiveness of all activities such as scheduling and staffing, which are planned at a later stage, depends on the accuracy. Scheduling. Based on estimations of effort and duration, the schedules for manpower and other resources are developed. Staffing. Staff organization and staffing plans are made. 
risk management. This activity includes risk identification, analysis and abatement planning. Miscellaneous plans. This includes making several other plans such as quality assurance plan, configuration management plan, etc. Project monitoring and control activities are undertaken after the initiation of development activities. The aim of project monitoring and control activities is to ensure that the software development proceeds as planned. While carrying out project monitoring and control activities, a project manager may sometimes find it necessary to change the plan to cope with specific situations and make the plan more accurate as more project data becomes available. At the start of a project, the project manager does not have complete knowledge about the details of the project. As a project progresses through different development phases, the manager's information base gradually improves. The complexities of different project activities become clear. Some of the anticipated risks get resolved and new risks appear. The project parameters are re-estimated periodically, incorporating new understanding and change in project parameters. By taking these developments into account, the project manager can plan subsequent activities more accurately with increasing levels of confidence. Principles of Project Management In this video, we are going to see about principles of project management. There are various ways in which projects can be approached. Prince 2 PMBOK, Agile, Corbett, Critical Chain, Six Sigma. Each of these approaches has its own way of looking at projects and its own terminology for the documents and process that make up project management. There has been some rationalization in recent years, but there are still a dozen widely used methods. The most important principles are PMBOK, PRINCE2, Critical Chain and Agile. PRINCE2 PRINCE2 is a process-based approach for project management which provides easy, tailored and scalable methodology for the management of all types of projects. The method is the standard for public sector projects and it is practiced worldwide. This project management program that shares more of the functional and financial authority with senior management. PMBOK PMBOK is short for Project Management Body of Knowledge, which describes project management practices that are common to most projects most of the time. The PMBOK is published by the Project Management Institute, that is PMI, which was formed in USA. PMBOK is used widely and it offers various levels of certification. Critical Chain The critical chain method is not fundamentally different from the current mainstream approaches but it differs in the way that it handles risk and contingency. It is a method of planning and managing project execution designed to deal with uncertainties inherent in managing projects while taking into consideration the limited availability of resources. Agile The Agile approach uses an iterative method of determining requirements for engineering and software development projects in a highly flexible and interactive manner. 
It is most often used in small scale projects or in cases where the final deliverables are too complex for the customer to understand and specify before testing prototypes. Project Management Life Cycle In this video, we are going to see about Project Management Life Cycle. Project Management Life Cycle comprises of four phases. Project Initiation Project Planning Project Execution Project Closure Project Initiation the first phase of a project is the initiation phase. During this phase, a business problem or opportunity is defined and a business case providing various solution options is defined. Next, a feasibility study is conducted to investigate whether each option addresses the business problem and a final recommended solution is then put forward. Once the recommended solution is approved, a project is initiated to deliver the approved solution. Terms of reference are completed outlining the objectives, scope and structure of the new project and a project manager is appointed. The project manager begins recruiting a project team and establishes a project office environment. Approval is then sought to move into the detailed planning phase. Project Planning Once the scope of the project has been defined in the terms of reference, the project enters the detailed planning phase. This involves creating a project plan outlining the activities, tasks, dependencies and timeframes. Resources plan listing the labor, equipment and material required. Financial plan identifying the labor, equipment and material costs. Quality plan providing quality targets, assurance and control measures. Risk plan highlighting potential risk and actions to be taken to mitigate those risks. Acceptance plan listing the criteria to be met to gain customer acceptance. Communication plan describing the information needed to inform stakeholders. Procurement plan identifying products to be sourced from external suppliers. At this point, the project will have been planned is ready to be executed. Project Execution This phase involves implementing the plans created during the project planning phase. While each plan is being executed, a series of management processes are undertaken to monitor and control the deliverables being output by the project. This includes identifying change, risks and issues, reviewing deliverable quality and measuring each deliverable produced and the customer has accepted the final solution, the project is ready for closure. Project Closure Project closure involves releasing the final deliverables to the customer, handing over project documentation to the business, terminating supplier contracts, releasing project resources, and communicating the closure of the project to all stakeholders. The last remaining step is to undertake a post-implementation review to quantify the level of project success and identify any lessons learned for future projects. Project Initiation In this video, we are going to see about Project Initiation. Within the initiation phase, the business problem or opportunity is identified, a solution is defined, a project is formed and a project team is appointed to build and deliver the solution to the customer. The activities undertaken during the initiation phase. 
develop the business case the trigger to initiate a project is identifying a business problem or opportunity to be addressed A business case is created to define the problem or opportunity in detail and identify a preferred solution for implementation. The business case includes a detailed description of the problem or opportunity, a list of alternative solutions available, an analysis of the business benefits, costs, risks and issues, a description of the preferred solution, a summarized plan for implementation the business case is then approved by an identified project sponsor and the required funding is allocated to proceed with the feasibility study undertake a feasibility study at any stage during or after the creation of a business case a formal feasibility study may be commissioned The purpose of a feasibility study is to assess the likelihood of each alternative solution option achieving the benefits outlined in the business case. The feasibility study will also investigate whether the forecast costs are reasonable, the solution is achievable, the risks are acceptable and the identified issues are avoidable. Establish the term of reference. After the business case and feasibility study have been approved, a new project is formed. At this point, terms of reference are created. The terms of reference define the vision, objectives, scope and deliverables for the new project. They also describe the organization structure, activities, resources and funding required to undertake the project. Any risks, issues, planning assumptions and constraints are also identified. Appoint the project team. The project team is now ready to be appointed. Although a project manager may be appointed at any stage during the life of the project, the manager will ideally be appointed prior to recruiting the project team. The project manager creates a detailed job description for each role in the project team and recruits people into each role based on their relevant skills and experience. Set up the project office. Project office will help user to identify the right location for your PMO team. Ensure that you have the correct infrastructure. Procure the right PMO equipment and tools. Define the PMO roles and responsibilities. Put in place suitable standards and processes. Implement relevant project management templates. Offer project management office services to projects. Project review form. The project review form is completed at the end of the initiation project phase has achieved its objectives to data. First, a project management review is conducted to measure the deliverable produced by the project. Project planning. In this video, we are going to see about project planning. The planning phase involves the creation of a set of planning documents which will guide the team throughout the project. The key stages are as follows. Project plan, resource plan, financial plan, quality plan, risk plan, acceptance plan, Communications plan, place review, project execution. In this video, we are going to see about project execution. During the execution phase, the deliverables are physically built and presented to the customer for acceptance. 
While each deliverable is being constructed, a group of management processes are carried out to monitor and control activities. Once all the deliverables have been produced and accepted by the customer, the project is ready for closure. Build the deliverables This phase involves physically constructing each deliverable for acceptance by the customer. The activities undertaken to construct each deliverable will vary depending on the type of project being undertaken. Monitor and Control While the project team is physically producing each deliverable, the project manager implements a series of management processes to monitor and control the activities being undertaken by the project team. An overview of each management process follows. Time management, cost management, quality management, change management, risk management, issue management, procurement management, acceptance management, communications management. Project Closure In this video, we are going to see about Project Closure. Following the acceptance of all project deliverables by the customer, the project will have met its objectives and be ready for closure. Project Closure is the last phase in the project life cycle and must be conducted formally so that the business benefits delivered by the project are fully realized by the customer. The activities outlined in the figure are undertaken. Perform project closure. Review project completion. Perform project closure. Project closure or close out essentially involves winding up the project. This includes determining whether all of the project completion criteria have been met, identifying any outstanding project activities, risks or issues. Handing over all project deliverables and documentation to the customer. Cancelling supplier contracts and releasing project resources to the business. Communicating the closure of the project to all stakeholders and interested parties. A project closure report is documented and submitted to the customer and or project sponsor for approval. The project manager is responsible for undertaking each of the activities identified in the project closure report and the project is closed only when all the activities listed in the project closure report have been completed. Review project completion The final activity within a project is the review of its success by an independent party. Success is determined by how well it performed against the defined objectives and conformed to the management processes outlined in the planning phase. To determine how well it performed, the following types of questions are answered. Did it result in the benefits defined in the business case? Did it achieve the objectives outlined in the terms of reference? Did it operate within the scope of the terms of reference? Did the deliverables meet the criteria defined in the quality plan? Finally, the evaluation should list the major achievements for this project and describe the positive effect that each environment has had on the customer's business. List any project failures and describe the effects they have had on the customer's business. Describe the lessons learned from undertaking this project and list any recommendations for similar projects in the future. 